What is going on, guys? Welcome to Virtual Red Band number 721, Berserk and Frenzy. New Wave Toys, newest arcade cabinets. They're mini arcade cabinets. You can see them behind me, my collection, or at least some of it. Anyways, their recent uh, Berserk and Frenzy has released. We'll take a quick look at that. We also got some VR news, but happy Saturday to you guys. Cheers to you. Mm -hmm. That's a Death Squad mug right there. If you want to get a Death Squad mug or a Death Squad hat or any of our new shirts, you go to DeathSquad.tv. There you have everything, Death Squad. And right at the very top, you can click on Shop Squad, and that will take you to ShopSquad.tv. There you have the new shirts, mugs, and hats. We've been getting swamped with orders. You guys are loving the new release of the Toxic Cat long sleeve in both red and yellow. Uh... They are almost sold out, guys. So if you haven't bought one yet, you might want to do it because I wore it on Kill Tony uh, like last week or something like that. And you guys, when you guys saw it, you just started going crazy on it. So don't, don't, don't sleep. Go to ShopSquad.tv or again, go to DeathSquad.tv for all the links. Including every past episode of Kill Tony is at DeathSquad.tv. It's also now on Spotify, every episode. But this Monday, if you didn't see Monday's episode, was with the great Mark Norman and Dan Soder. What a great episode. Both of those guys, just funny as fuck. Uh, love this episode. Check it out. Go to YouTube.com slash Kill Tony. Or you can just click right here at the top.
it's right there it is or click this big red circle and go there if you haven't already we're almost about to hit one million followers if we haven't already mm. have we 983 look at that oh my god that episode it already has 1.5 million views it's getting crazy it's getting crazy on the old kill tony front you got it's just blown up out of nowhere it's so awesome i, I can't thank you guys enough for it um also you could check out if you're ever in austin texas right at the very top and click on sunset strip comedy club that will take you to sunsetstripatx.com there you can find every one of our shows we have shows almost every single day but most importantly every thursday is my death squad secret show holy shit this week thursday we had an insane lineup there was so many people in town it was badass we had uh eleanor kerrigan was in town sarah wineshake kim congdon uh we had ari manis you know ari from even watching here of course we had cam patterson hans kim brian holtzman dylan sullivan lucas mccrary mickey housley david jolly oh god damn david jolly so many people enrique chacon uh, it's always a fun time every single Thursday. If you know, if you're ever in Austin, you're like, I want to go to a show where there's so many comics I know, and it's just, I want, I want to see as many comics as I can when I'm in Austin. This is the show for you because we usually have 15 to 17 different comedians on the show. It's rapid fire. It goes all night. Just bought all new seats. I just spent a lot of money and bought a whole bunch of new seats for the Sunset Strip. So. It's now 100% more comfortable, if not 200% more comfortable, because a lot of the chairs, which we just got when we got the place, were like these metal chairs, and they're, they're fine, but after like a half hour, hour, I, at least for me, I was like, man, this, this sucks. So I uh, spent my own money on that, got all new seats, so check that out. Uh, if you go to Sunset Strip, check out the seats. Check out the new chairs. Anyways, go to sunsetstripatx.com. My show is every Thursday. It's called The Secret Show, but we have shows almost every single night. Sunsetstripatx.com. Again, everything can be found at deskquad.tv. Hi, chat. How is the chat? How are you guys? Hello. Hello there. Hi, free Diddy. Oh, God. Diddy's not going to be free. Diddy's in a lot of shit, I think. It just seems like every day it gets worse and worse. It might be, uh, it might be over for the old Puff Daddy. <laughs> Remember when he used to be called Puff Daddy? What's with all these guys changing their names? You know, Kanye, Ye, Puff Daddy, Diddy. Is it time for me to change my name? Should I, should I just go by my, my real name now or something? Man, no, call me Rack. Call me Brian Rack. Rack. That's it. I'll just be Reich. That's fucked up if I did that. <laughs> I'm Brian Reich. You know, like the third one. Um, yeah. He went back to Puff Daddy before, for a bit. I didn't even know that. Did he? Did he? <laughs> I see what you did there. He went back to Puff Daddy. Did he? Did he? <laughs> did he? Did he? Did he? Did he? Oh, man, what am I even talking about? What am I even talking about? Beautiful butt naked big titty women just don't fall from the sky, you know. Oh. Mm. Anyways, it's been over a week. Yeah, I've been gone, guys. Uh, I've been busy this the last week. I think the last time I broadcast was last Wednesday. Does that sound right? Yeah, I'm back home. I was downtown a lot this uh, week doing uh, some stuff, hanging out. Got to hang out with the great Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz was in town for a week. Or not a week, but he was in town for like three or four days. So I got to hang out with Joey. And you know what? You think like you have good, you good bud, you know, if you smoke green tea. You think you have good bud. You know, I think I, you know, the bud I get is pretty good. And I, I'm not saying I smoke that much, but Jesus, you just hang out with Joey Diaz for a half hour. It's the most, 
green tea I've ever been. <laughs> like I couldn't even drink this week. Like I barely drank this week because every time I hung out with Joey, I was just so, so gone. That was just like, I don't know how to function as a human. Um, it was pretty cool though seeing Joey as always. Good seeing Eleanor. Got to see my friend Steve Simone. He was in town. Got to hang out with him. Um, Kim Congdon. It's great seeing her. Sarah Weinstein. God, there's so many people in town right now. It's like I feel like I'm in L.A. Seriously. It's great. I'm loving the new studio downtown. I've been spending a lot more time there than I should. Um, it's really easy to spend time in the, in the, uh, downtown, I've noticed. I've never lived inside of a city, like a downtown area. I've always been the suburb, Brian. Uh, but when you're around all that shit, like, you're like, hey, I want to get something to eat. Oh, every single restaurant I can walk to. Oh, I want to go do something. Oh, there's every single thing you could possibly want. Walkable. It's nice being walkable. That's the problem where, like, out here where I live, out in the, in the sticks, uh, you have to drive everywhere. Even just to get, go, like, in the closest gas station is still, like, a mile away, you know? It's, uh, it's a lot. It changes. It makes you stay at your house more. And it makes you buy groceries more. Like, it makes you just want to not leave your house, which is nice. It's a good feeling, just wanting to be home, you know? It's great. But big city, Brian, uh, I'm addicted to it. So hmm. I got to get my studio finished there, up though. Uh, all right, we have a big show tonight just because it's been over a week and we got some VR news. But we also have some things that I wanted to show you guys. As you know, I've been collecting these little mini arcade machines. They're from New Wave Toys. They pretty much make uh, legit, very well-made uh, replicas of arcade games and you know I'm, I'm an old boy I, I grew up in the arcades so I have always loved the uh, old arcade machines it's and this company New Wave Toys pretty much they just they go through it and they pretty much make it identical to what the original arcade looked like down to the exact you know, detail of every little slot, like coin machine on it, you know, the, the back of it, the sides of it, and they just make it really small and they work. Like all these have batteries in them. You could actually hook them up. There's an HDMI cable. You can hook it up to your TV and play it if you wanted to. You, uh, but it's more just, you know, to put on your, you know, bookshelf if you're a fan of a certain arcade machine. And uh, you can, uh, you know, it's just kind of nice, like a nice little trophy. They're not that cheap. It's actually something I got into, like a hobby I got into, and then now I'm kind of stuck in it. I have all of them, but it's getting expensive. It's because I didn't know they released so many, and uh, they release a lot of them. And their latest one is one, and this is kind of falls under a weird thing for me. It, like most of these games that they make, you know, like Street Fighter and Food Fight and Space Ace. And, centipede and stuff you know are games that i know and i've played and i enjoyed but their latest release is a game that i never really got into too much i never actually played it at the arcade and that's berserk and frenzy now berserk was a game that came out in the 80s uh and frenzy was the sequel here it is on new wave toys if you go to newwavetoys.com uh this is you can still buy it. It's 180 bucks. Now, sometimes if they don't sell that well, they'll, you'll see them drop price, like on Amazon or something like that. Um, but a lot of times these things sell out pretty fast. Now, I don't know. Berserk and Frenzy. I don't know if there's that many. I think there's a lot of people like me that kind of remember this game. But I don't think there was many people that really like obsessed about Berserk or Frenzy. I, at least I don't think. I could be wrong. But... Uh, as you can see, just by this thing, it comes with, you know, all these little tiny details. Um, and it is a exact replica down to even the little circuit board. Uh, this is what like used to be able to pull this out. If you were repairing the game, you would pull out this huge entire circuit board and that would have the game and all the electronics on it. And you could swap boards or you can fix the board and stuff kind of unique i've never seen this in a arcade machine before i don't think they did that much 
Um, but it even has, you know, like the back of it and everything is exactly how it used to be. It, it comes with all these fun things. It comes with like little mini coins that uh, you could put in. I don't, see, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it comes with like little mini coins that you could put in there and it comes with little you know even comes with a kick plate if you want to put a kick plate on the bottom of your uh thing um little decals you know and also it comes with like a cable like a power cable to charge your battery and and it comes with all that stuff i am not going to show you the complete unboxing i just before i went live i unboxed them I haven't even turned them on. I haven't even actually looked at them. I just literally unboxed them, took them out of the box. And I thought, let's just take a quick look at these uh, since I've done it for all the other ones. Uh, let's try to get this camera low zoomed out. We'll start with the first one. This is Berserk. Um, as you can tell, like there's, like, these are, there's actual coin slots on the front of it. And they work. You can put a coin in there and... and uh, goes inside the machine and you can get the coin this little key there's actually a little key and you can open uh this but i whatever here is the thing i, I was talking about earlier the um press here okay and here is an actual circuit board that comes out i mean super unnecessary but I guess it's identical to the actual board that was in the machine. And when they made the sequel to Berserk, Frenzy, which I'm going to show you in a, in, in a bit, they pretty much just took out this, this, this circuit board and put the new Frenzy. It's like a game cartridge, pretty much. I put the new Frenzy uh, one in there. Uh, and then just put new art like on the marquee and around here and on the sides and they just repurposed the old berserks to make it a frenzy machine uh the art on the side you know it's classic you even got a little lock and stuff uh on the bottom here you got power you got usb so you can uh I believe that's so you can plug in like controllers and stuff if you want to. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's for controllers and uh, charging is right next to it. And then HDMI, this is so you could plug it into your TV if you wanted to do that for some weird reason. Uh, let's turn this on. I don't even know if this has a charge yet. Usually this shit comes with charges though. Uh, this also has a screen on it and this is a new version of what they've done before. This, there's a weird little filter on this LCD panel to make it look like it's an old TV tube game. So it gives it the effect like it's a CRT monitor. Uh, all right, I just turned it on to see if we hear anything. Oh, the lights have turned on. The coin lights. Is the marquee turned on yet? I don't believe so. Maybe it has. And maybe it's just very light. We will look at this together. There's the marquee. <laughs> that uh, looks very, I mean, authentic, like a faded marquee, you know? You could see this, imagine this is like in an old laundry mat somewhere or a 7-Eleven. Don't know what those beeping noises are. Oh. Oh, did you hear that? That was pretty sweet. Yeah, now if you don't remember Berserk, the the game was you uh, going around and shoot, trying to get out. There was a, there's always an exit. And you try to shoot all them. You, you're pretty much just trying to get out of this room the whole time. I mean, yes. I know a lot of you young people are like, that's the gayest shit I've ever seen. When I say gay, I mean G-H-A-Y. But uh, now back then, this was the shit. Uh, the, the, I'm loving the synthesized voice. That was very rare at the time. They didn't, not many games had the, the voice synthesizer. Um, very cool. This is Berserk. I turn this off now. Maybe. Okay, just turn off. Now, 
when this game came out, you know, it had its run, uh, and then a sequel came out. So if you owned a arcade, uh, one of the things that they did a lot is they would repurpose old arcade units. It was cheaper if you bought Berserk as an arcade, uh, if you owned an arcade, uh, they would sell you uh, like kits to transfer old games into new games. So like they would give you a new sticker to put on the side. Uh, they would give you a new marquee. They would give you a new uh, sticker to go around the monitor. And then they would give you new circuits like this chip that I showed you that pulled out so that you could upgrade this cabinet into a new arcade game. And so that's what they did when Frenzy came out. That's why and this one, this one's been like, uh, I forget what they call this. I forget what they call this. Let me tell you what they call this. They call this um, Survivor Series. So this is uh, this is what they call the Survivor Series on their website. And what that means, this is kind of been distressed uh, to look like it's been beat up. Because, you know, by the time frenzy came out and somebody was to put this in a old arcade machine that's already been used and abused usually these cabinets are, are a little bit more beat up and stuff and distressed you know people have put cigarette butts out on it or scraped it and uh, carved their initials in it and stuff so new wave for fun uh has been releasing like these second versions of it uh, and that's what this one is for uh this is a the exact same machine, but it has been repainted. Uh, it's got the new artwork for and, and stuff for it. Uh, but you can tell it looks, it's the same machine. On the side, I mean, this looks like somebody got shot over here. I mean, that's just kind of disgusting. I mean, I, I get it's kind of supposed to look like realistic and stuff, but that just looks like there's blood on the side and like, what is all this blood looking stuff? On the other side, it's the same weird sticker. Uh, they obviously just painted this whole thing orange and then put the new stickers on it. They probably got sent paint too, I'm guessing. Uh, and uh, yeah, but you can even see on the bottom, they made it so it looks like it's like decaying. The wood's kind of decaying. You can see the paint underneath it and stuff. But if you look at the original, you know, it is the same exact cabinet that has just been repurposed. Now, Frenzy uh, has the same thing on the side, has uh, on the back, everything pretty much the same. Let's try to see what it looks like. I don't even know. I've never even played Frenzy. I don't even think I know what Frenzy looks like, but it's a sequel to Berserk, so it probably looks close to the same. I think it only came out like two years after. I might be wrong. Um, when did this come back? I don't even remember. Um, but it's faded and worn. It even has a marquee, uh, marquee flicker mode, I guess, in the settings. Yeah, you can make it f the marquee up here flicker, so as if, like, one of the batteries is, uh, or one of the light bulbs is going out. with the graph I'm just, oh yeah see look at those graphic upgrades now can you imagine nowadays if that's what the sequel look like the the graphic look that's how much graphics improved in like two or three years or, ooh, even the synthesize is a little bit better i love that sound very cool so there you go, guys. This is Frenzy. Let me see if I can figure out how to get into. How do I get into that mode? Oh, there we go. See, watch the, see that marquee. Robot attack. <laughs> it's just random. It's randomly flickers on and off. just does it randomly i guess 
Um, there you go, guys. I'm going to turn this one off. Uh, so if you uh, want to get one of these, uh, either Frenzy or uh, Berserk, you can go to New Wave toys.com not a sponsor at all i i wish they were because i spend way too much money on them um but they always make really high-end quality products i love them very i almost don't want to recommend because i don't want you guys to get addicted to collecting them like uh i have but uh because it's uh you know it's nice when you get addicted to buying something that's like you know oh i'm buying those like toys that are, cost like ten dollars you know like those pop toys or whatever the fuck they're called but um when you're when each one of these things costs like 180 dollars and that's if they're in stock some a lot of these new wave toys they uh quickly go out of stock and then you have to buy them on ebay prices which have been crazy but they have the mini coke machine and stuff like that which i've shown you before they have always have a new stuff this is my keychain that i use right now it's a little Little, it lights up, uh, but they have a lot of fun stuff. These little boom boxes are boxes are cool. Um, they have little old cigarette machines that are actually USB chargers. So if you want a cool little old cigarette machine uh, to charge up your stuff on your computer desk or something, but as you can tell, there's a lot of shit that's already sold out. They sell out a lot, um, but always fun stuff. I highly recommend, as always, New Wave toys. What do you guys think in the chat? Let's talk to you guys. Let's talk to you. Like my hat, your hat is so fire. Thank you. Mm. It's funny. This is one of those hats that I uh, <laughs> that I I bought a while ago. I've had this hat for maybe six months. Maybe. Um, I wish I could remember the, the the website I bought it from. I think it's like called like <sighs> Stepdad Hats or something like that. I forget what it is. Um, but this is one of those hats that it's funny to me, but wearing it out in public, it's kind of cringe. Like I was at Target and I put this hat on and I was just wearing it. I'm just in the aisle and this guy, this guy and his wife and his kids were next to me and they looked over at me and I was like, Hey, you know, doing one just kind of, I, uh, we were both looking at the same thing. And then I just noticed the guy looking at my hat and then turning his family around <laughs> and walking away. And I'm like, maybe it wasn't about the hat, but you know, it's like one of these things where you're like, you wear something like that. And he's like, I have kids here. I don't know. I'm probably overthinking it. Um, it's also a weird fit hat. Like it's got like these points to it that I'm not a fan of. Like, I like it when hats are like, kind of like, they call it low profile hats. This is like, I don't know. I feel like I'm in a, wearing like a what's that shit when you're wearing a sh fake uh padding on your shoulders shoulder pads like i feel like i got shoulder pads in my hat i don't like it but can it be like that can it be like that you know what i mean uh yeah it's i'm a veteran i'm a veteran i had heart palpitations from uh Rhino boner pills. Patriots can be weird. Yeah, I, I also live in Texas, so it is weird kind of having like a fake veteran hat. You know? I don't know. I need to get over it. Maybe I'll wear it Monday at, on Kill Tony. I haven't worn it on Kill Tony yet. I should wear it on Kill Tony at least once. Right? Thoughts on Lizzo? I actually don't really know who Lizzo is. I'm sorry. Isn't she a big girl that sings? Is that who I'm thinking of? I, I, yeah, I, I have no idea. I I think I know who she is. She's the big girl, right? I, like, she had a bunch of dancers like, on her show. Is that who am I thinking of the right person? She has a, she had a bunch of dancers and she treated like shit or something. I don't remember. If that's who it is, then I'm not, I know her like 1%. She quit? She quit what? Being fat? <laughs> is she fat? I don't know. Um, what else? You want a tiny cabinet of narc? Oh, that would be nice. 
Fred Barr is watching to make sure this isn't a paid advertisement. This is not a paid advertisement. I could show you my bank statements from, I, I'll, t- I'll tell you right now, New Wave Toys, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they're racist. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wish New Wave Toys, if New Wave Toys was a sponsor, I would make real proper YouTube videos. I wouldn't just show you guys at the beginning of a, a live stream, you know? Uh, I would make actually real videos. If, if they sent me free shit, I would make a free review YouTube video for it. Like a real one where I'm like actually using cameras and editing it and stuff. Whoops. Let me smoke some green tea real quick. I couldn't smeak, smeak. I couldn't smeak. I couldn't snarf. I couldn't smoke green tea if this was a sponsored video. Or was I? When are you moving, George? When are you moving? Moving? I'm not moving. I never was movies. Why would I be moving? Hmm? No, I just got a studio. I got a work studio downtown that I'm still working on. And once I get the studio part done of it, because right now I just got all the other stuff done, and now I'm just starting to get into the studio part of it. I need to figure it out. I need to figure out if I want to make it more YouTube-y. I, like, my first thing was I was going to make it like my classic Death Squad Studios where it's like a table and you sit around a table. But I kind of, I'm kind of over those. I like, I like it when people are just sitting in chairs. Like what I call that more of a YouTube studio instead of a podcast studio. So I think I'm going to make it more of a YouTube studio. Like not, like I think the most guests I can have is maybe two, maybe three. Uh, make it more, I don't know, chill, less podcasty because I'm kind of over the, uh, classic podcast studio vibe, but I'm, I would say I'm only 10% done of it. So I literally just started. That's why I was gone for a week. I'm planning this shit out, trying to finish everything. Um, and I need to, I want to make it kind of a VR studio too, which that's the thing I, that's on the least of my worries right now because I'm just really waiting for Valve Index to do something before I have to go buy another Valve Index. Um, uh, yeah. Love KT, what's your personal favorite episode? Hmm. You know, I I would have to say I really like New Year's Eve. I really thought New Year's Eve, that episode was pretty amazing. I mean, you, I'm a big Mr. Beast fan. And having Mr. Beast there, why, well, you know, and Sugar Sean, I love Sugar. And uh, Matt and Shane and, you know, everybody, you know, Danny Brown. And just having everybody there... And then having, and then asking Janice to marry me and all that shit, all that together, it's, uh, it was, you know, it was amazing. I thought it was just the perfect storm. Um, but I will say, we filmed an episode, was it last week or two weeks ago? I think it was last week. Uh, that was, I think, if anything, my second favorite episode. Like, I can't wait for you guys to see this episode. Um, Because it's it's also kind of like that same idea as like Mr. Beast and Sugar Sean, like all these crazy people are there. It was kind of like one of those episodes, like what the hell is going on here? Like, this is, are we, did we die in a car accident? This is just, you know, one of those episodes. Like I'm still, I still can't figure it out. And I can't wait to talk to you guys about that episode because there's a lot of, that happened during that episode and after that episode that is very interesting. So once that episode comes out, come back here and I'll tell you all about it. Deal? Deal. Um, How does Mr. Beast have so much money to just to hand out like that? Um, I'll tell you. Uh, I don't know if you see what kind of views he gets. 
like I think I just looked at one of his videos the other day and it was something something it wasn't even on his main channel I don't think I think I was looking at like Mr. Beast 2 and it was just like a basic and I was like how do my, how much does this basic video he just posted have it and like, that he posted like six hours ago and it already had 35 million views I don't even know what Mr. 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 you know what now I'm kind of interested and that was just on his second channel Mr. Beast have you ever looked at his views? It's like, it's not, it's like not real life. Like, his, his latest video that he posted 10 hours ago has 28 million views. The one he posted two weeks ago has 106 million views. The one before that has 151. The one before that, 177, 177 million views. You know how much money that is? And that's not even including the sponsors. Mr. Beast gets money from YouTube for how many views? I don't even know how much 177 million views would be. I would guess, if I were to guess, how much 177... I would guess... $20 million, $10 million, 10 to $20 million. <laughs> yeah, I know there's, there's a, that's a big gap. But I would guess for 177 million views, I would guess 10 to $20 million. And then on top of that, having a sponsor that knows you get over 100 million views, that's like Super Bowl sponsors. So these people are paying millions of dollars just to be a sponsor on the video. Millions. I'm not even saying a million. Millions. The sponsors on his videos are probably millions. That's how he has money, dude. And he has all these channels. I, just, I didn't even know he had Mr. Beast too. He has like eight other channels. And they're all making the same amount of money. He's just, he's just printing money over there. And I will say, I will say this. Uh, being a fan of Mr. Beast and being able to meet him, um... He is Mr. Beast off camera. He is exactly the same person and just a very nice person. Like he was like when, like when he was on the show after I, I asked Janice to marry me, he like, I don't know if it was on the podcast or not, but he was like, how long have they been dating or something? Like he was really like, oh, this is great. Like he wanted, you know, he cared. And like, he was just like, like afterwards, he like congratulated us. And he's like, that was really fun. And, you know, just a nice guy. Uh, you know, some of these people where they act nice on YouTube and then you meet them afterwards and they're just like the complete opposite, you know, or, or a different person. Not Mr. Beast. He, he was he was awesome. I uh, really liked him. I don't watch him anymore. His stick gets old. I get it. Apple. Um, like I watched his latest video where he was stuck on an island. Uh maybe two hours ago, three hours ago. And I'm not like, I'm not like his stuff. Isn't like the first thing I click on. It's one of those things where when I do click on it though, I'm like, Oh, this is actually really fun. I don't know why I always like, uh, hesitate to click on these videos because you know, I'm, I'm older. I'm not, you know, watching Mr. Beast. is like watching a TV show almost like you're watching fear factor or something it's a little bit more of a commitment than when you're just like putting on something like Linus tech tips and you just want to see him review a computer or something, you know, that's easy for me to click on. Oh, you're reviewing a computer. Cool. I could like look at my Instagram and shit while I listen to that in the background. Mr. Beast is like, no, you kind of have to pay attention. It's like a TV show. Um, Is Casey Rocket paying to be on Kill Tony? Oh, you're one of those guys where you don't think Casey is good? Man, I don't know what's wrong with you, Jack. I've heard about you kind of people. Uh, it's kind of like when Hans was on the show. Everyone hated and There was a group of people that hated Hans, saying he's the worst. We should replace him with Casey Rocket. And then we put Casey Rocket on literally the nicest, one of the nicest, funniest, unique co comedians I know. And it's like, how the fuck is he getting hate? Like, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You know, it really just shows you that 
how miserable people are because I don't know. I don't know how you could possibly not laugh and giggle when Casey Rockets up there going crazy because it's like literally. I take that back. Uh, I talked to somebody last night who he said the first time he saw him he didn't get it. He's like, "What's going on? I don't get it." And I was like, "What? What do you mean get it?" He's like, "Oh, I figured it out the second time I saw it. Then it snapped. It, it's just ridiculous. You know, it's it's just ridiculous." You watch it and you're just like, what the fuck? And what's cool with Casey is that as ridiculous as he is, he has jokes in there. They're hidden by ridiculousness. It's funny. Everything he says just makes me giggle. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of you take Pablo Francisco and mix him with Robin Williams. That's pretty much what, what Casey Rocket is. And I don't know, maybe it's not for everyone. I, I, I just can't understand that because I just think it's so fun and silly. But, you know, some people don't want silly. They want, they want, you know, people have different tastes. People, there's some people that just want, no, I want good classic joke writing. I want a set up punchline. You know, I get that. Uh, but some of my favorite comics are more improv based, you know, Zach Galifianakis, uh, you know, and, and, and like that kind of stuff. I like more of the silly, like I, I think Will Ferrell can just sit there and not say a word and I would laugh. I like all kinds of comedy, but I lean towards silly a little bit more than serious. You know, there's some amazing comics that research the topics and go into like extreme detail and then hit you with these punchlines and it's just brilliant. Or there's people that just go up there and go goobity goobity and like run around and that, be silly. I like all kinds, but I lean more towards this just silly nonsense stuff. You know, I, I, I grew up, uh, Steve Martin was one of my favorite comics growing up. I mean, I was early 80s. I thought Steve Martin was the shit. King. Da, da, da. There's a new Steve Martin documentary, by the way, that maybe we'll take a look at. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying all improv comics, by the way, are awesome and funny. I'm not saying that at all, because also I do hate most improv comics or people that do improv. I, I'm not, not really into. I'm just saying more of the, I, I wouldn't even call them improv comics. I would call them alternative comics. You know, like, ah, fuck. Brent, what's that guy's name? Damn. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Brendan Walsh. That's a good one. I like Brendan Walsh. See, he's a silly goose. I enjoy silly gooses like Brendan Walsh. And Dave. Remember Dave from Bone Zone? He's funny. He's a silly boy. All right, we got some... uh, I'm just going to refill my drink. I, I'm out of Red Bull. So I'm going super white trash tonight. Yes. I want you to know something embarrassing about me. And maybe if I'm ever on Are You Garbage, I'm supposed to go on that show someday. But if I'm ever on Are You Garbage, I would talk about how recently I got back into Sunny D. About two months ago, I saw Sunny D at Costco, and I'm like, you know what? I used to love that. And then I started looking at it. It's like, oh, I guess there is actually vitamin C in it, at least. And there is actual fruit juice in it. But we all know it's not It's not real orange juice, or it's better than orange juice. But uh, I am so addicted to these little baby bottles of Sunny D. There's nothing like waking up in the morning chugging one of these motherfuckers but i'm out of red bull so i thought you know what let's make some screwdrivers with sunny d and that's a lot of vodka that's more of a martini uh but no it is pure trash i i agree and i agree with all of you i agree you know i i thought i had a a uh, capri sun recently and I thought that was going to do the same thing. I thought I was going to hit that Capri Sun and go, dude, yeah. Oh, this is so good. It reminds me of when I was a baby. I was just going to be buying Capri. No, I, I, I was like, oh, this is garbage. This tastes like chemicals. 
I did the same thing to those little jugs of juice. Remember those little plastic jugs? I remember as a kid, those little plastic jugs of juice and I had the uh, aluminum foil type like lid on it. You just had to peel off. Remember getting those in your lunchies? Uh, I remember as a kid, I thought that was gold. And I bought some of those. No, they were gross. They were disgusting. And then I threw them away. Gross. But man, I got this Sunny D. You put this in the refrigerator, get it nice and cold, and it's just a small amount. It's actually, it, 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 it hits. And if you haven't had one in a while, just check it out. It kind of hits. It's, even if you, I don't know, even if you don't like it when you hit it, you're like, no, nah, I don't like it. You'll go back to it. You'll, you'll be like, you know what? I'm going to go back to that Sunny D. It tastes pretty much the same, too. I think it's the same formula. Sunny D Martini, new Sunset Strip drink of the night. That's that's actually a good idea. Oh, did I see that uh, Shreddy? Shreddy, are you still here in the chat room? Tang is the worst. Uh, you know what? I used to love Tang, too. But I think, uh, RJ, I think back in the day, I... Um, I got Tang recently as an adult, and it wasn't that good. I, I agree with you. But I, back in the day, Tang used to be pretty good as a kid. Cold, cold Sunny D playing outside was the shit. Cold Sunny D waking up with a hangover. Try it out, guys. <laughs> Maybe don't go to Costco and buy as big of a pack as like I, you know, at Costco, you have to buy like a hundred of them. I'm sure, I'm sure regular grocery stores just have like single servings of Sunny D. Check it out. If you haven't, you know, I haven't, I haven't had it in 20, at least 20 years. And I was delighted that I still love it. Shreddy's here. Shreddy, here's a fun thing. Shreddy, if you don't follow Shreddy McSkate, he's in the chat room right now. Go on YouTube and check out Shreddy McSkate for all your cool ass e-bike content. But Shreddy, uh, the episode Monday we recorded of Kill Tony, which comes out in three weeks. Uh, some dude uh, on the show was talking about he, he, he uh, takes an e-bike to work and stuff like that. And I go, oh, like something cool, like a Super 73? And he goes, no, just one of the public ones. But I got to remind myself to, to uh, I, I wanted to tell you that. Yeah, I brought Super 73 up on Kill Tony. If you guys don't know what Super 73 is, awesome e-bikes. Check them out. I have one. It's If you're looking for an e-bike, you want the coolest looking one, I think. Uh, with uh, And they're really popular. And they look great. And they're nice. I would check out Super73.com. Big fan. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, let's do some VR news. We have not done a episode of Virtual Red Band for about a week. So there is actually some cool things that we can take a look at. Mm. All right, you know what? Since I brought up Super 73, before we even look at that, let's just look, show you what I mean, Super 73. They got a bunch of news. Oh, they got the kid bikes now. Oh, if you have a kid, you got to get your kid the kid Super 73. Jeez, I didn't even know that was out yet. Uh, but here, they're just badass bikes. Uh, and they have a really cool look to them. Like, I really like, uh, they're, they're even coming out with a, a motorcycle soon. Um, I got the R series. Wow, they, they, they're, they're different now. I'm guessing I have the adventure one. Looks a little, di this looks different than mine. Wait, did they change? I didn't even know they changed their bikes. Huh. Uh, I got one that's kind of like this, I think. Yes, this is the, the one I kind of have. Um, but I really like, they have that look right here where it says Super 73, that, that reminds me of the old uh, dirt bikes and stuff from the 70s. You know, you have a little, you, that kind of looks like a little gas container right there. Uh, they're just very stylish bikes. I do recommend Super 73. 
Wow, they don't even have my bike anymore. My bike's so old. What are these? Wow. Very cool. I can't believe they have kids' bikes now. New arrivals. Let's see what's going on. Oh, they got little baby strollers for them? Wow. 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 There you go. Super73.com. Uh, do you guys have e-bikes? Any of you guys in the chat room have any e-bikes? You know, my new place downtown, there's uh, scooters everywhere. So I don't even need to, like, take my e-bike down there because literally... They have scooters. Now, Janice doesn't like the scooters. Her hands, I've never heard this before. Her hands are too small for, for the scooters, like the, the Lime scooters, uh, you know. Uh, her hands are too small to, like, hold the thing and do the throttle. They're too small, is what she says. I don't know about that, but um, she got mad at me. She refuses to go on another one. So, but I've been riding the scooters a lot, and they are dangerous. But, you know, you just don't go do crazy shit. Like, you just watch out for potholes. Don't act like a dick. You know, it's easy. You guys ride scooters a lot? Making my way downtown with Lance. Um, hmm. uh, does it compare to a Suron? No, Surons uh, are, they're a little different than e-bikes. Surons are more like um, dirt bikes. Surons are a little bit more harder to drive around the city to without getting in trouble. They're not really street legal. Uh, you can make them street legal and they sell like street legal versions of it, I guess. But uh, those are more for, no, you just want to go crazy in the suburbs or you, you, you want a dirt bike that doesn't make noise. But no, Surons are badass. I've almost bought one a million times, but they're dangerous. I mean, they're scary fast. Uh, everyone, all my friends love their Suron. I just haven't, I've been, you know, I think Super, I think Super 73 is more around my groove where uh, it's fast enough and it's cool enough. And um, Surons are pretty much if you want, you don't want a motorcycle, but you kind of want to, you, you kind of want to shred all over the place. They're a little bit more, I don't know. They have a look also that kind of makes them look a little less friendly when you're like in a park or if you're on a bike path. You know, people see that, you're like, hey, you can't have that thing here, you know, where you see like a Super 73 or something like that. And it's like, oh, he's just riding a bike. It's a mountain bike or something, you know. It depends. I kind of will probably end up getting a Suron at one point in my life. Maybe, because I don't know. I don't know. My favorite lately has been my Jackrabbit which I think I taught, showed you guys, and it's just a very tiny bike. It's like if a, a bike that you want to be able to carry upstairs. You just want to, but that's, that's a little different. You know, it's like short distances and uh, stuff. We'll have a whole episode about e-bikes if you want to, if you guys are interested in e-bikes. Or you should just go over to Shreddy's uh, channel or Dill, Dylan, Dill Legal, Loophole Culture. Go to Shreddy McSkate uh, on YouTube or Loophole Culture. That's all they do. They re especially Shreddy. He just uh, reviews new bikes all the time and goes on rides, and uh, it's fun. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into this VR news. Let me smoke some green tea real quick, and then uh, yikes. If the bike's electric or not, the seat still smells the same. All right, Chad has a stinky asshole. All right, let's get into this VR news. 
Home Run Derby VR. Major League Baseball Home Run Derby swings for the fences on Main Quest Store after a long stink in the App Lab. This has been a long time coming, but this game is finally available. Let's take a look Welcome at the trailer. Home Run Derby VR. Time to step up to the plate and go big. You know, I have so many friends that are really into baseball. I'm uh, not the most baseball boy, Brian. I don't mind going to a game. It's fun. But baseball video games, on the other hand, I've always been kind of fun. I've always liked a good baseball game. But baseball in VR, you kind of got my attention there. And it kind of makes sense. It seems like it's a no-brainer to have a good baseball game in VR. Holy cow! Now, this trailer so far has been kind of uh, vague on what the actual experience of playing this game is. Fail. Someone call NASA, because that's a moonshot. Right, that's, that's... Boy, he's in a groove now. Graphics seem decent. Back to back to back. On fire. It doesn't really show you it doesn't really show you though what it's like to actually hit a ball or play. They're just showing the guy hit it not in VR. Uh the graphics look pretty decent and just like looking here it looks like they have some cool shit where you can in VR like look at like old I mean if you're a baseball nerd this actually might be cool for you. You could see like old jerseys or shit like that that you know uh who knows? Can't get better than this. Here's the goal. See, I wish they would show you what the interface looks like when you're actually hitting the ball. Instead of that, they're just showing this guy swinging. Ball. All right, here we go. It's on its way. Wow. Okay. Bat. That ball is high. It's fair. And it's gone. This kid is special. Go big. Go yard. Home run derby VR. Avail that actually... I like that. If you're into baseball, that's awesome. And it's for the quest only, it appears. So that's a big win for questies. Where's my questies at? <laughs> Shreddy loves his Sir Ron. Sir Ron. Anyways, Home Run Derby. Looks great. Love it. Um, Apple announces WWDC 24 with plans to highlight vision OS enhancements. As you know, Apple has this conference once a year called WWDC. And, uh, you know, their, their headset, their, their Apple Vision Pro, when it was released, got a lot of people on YouTube talking about it, blah, blah, blah. And then it kind of just sizzled. And including my own personal use for it, I haven't actually picked that motherfucker up in like a couple weeks. It's just kind of been sitting there. Last night I was like, oh, I should put it on and see what's new. And I just didn't. You know why? Because the launch was boring. There wasn't, a, you know, when you release a new Nintendo, when you release a new PlayStation, there's usually one or two games that you're like, no, this is what they call a system seller. Like, this game alone is worth buying the system for. I must play the new Mario, because, and I will buy the system just... Or I need to buy the new Grand Theft Auto. I will buy the system just to play. There wasn't that. And there was actually less than that. And up, other than, like, like, the movies, the 3D movies, and a couple of things, it, like, it's, uh, there's nothing I really want to put it on for. So... Apple this year for their WWDC, which is like their, their, uh, it's their, like, uh, you know, their big festival once a year. It's their Woodstock once a year. Plans to highlight uh, all the new advancements on it. So maybe we'll get some good news when it comes out. According to a recent report from Mac Rumors, Apple has been uh, internally testing a new Apple Pencil that supports Vision Pro. You know how there's no controller for uh, 
for Apple Vision Pro right now? Well, their first controller is going to be a pencil. So you can draw. Now, that will kind of get me on board. If there's a badass drawing program that using a new Apple Pencil that it is so like, oh, my God, this is better than real, real painting or real drawing in VR. I mean, you can already do all that shit, obviously. But if it was like next level accuracy or something that that could be a mild system seller uh which will allow it to work on drawing apps to boot the company recently published a patent for such a device which could technically uh the headset's first supported controller like i just said anyways we'll find out uh soon there's it just seems like there's going to be a lot of surprises um June 10th is what uh, we have to wait for, I guess. Who knows? You know, it also might be something where they're going to release something like a new iPad or a new Apple Pencil or something else that goes with it. Like, oh, no, this combined with this makes it this. You know, who knows? There might be a cool combo. As it is right now, I'm not saying I'm disappointed with the Apple Vision Pro. I just think that they launched prematurely, which I'm not hating on because I'd rather them have done that and I got it earlier and they can get a lot of feedback from uh, people that actually got it and improve it uh, rapidly uh, other than them just not doing that. I would rather have it early, obviously. But I will say... Um, I, well, I haven't given a proper review of the Apple Vision Pro because um, there's nothing much to review about it, and I really don't want to hate on it. I will say, if I were to review it right now, I, I wouldn't recommend it at all, unless you're a rich guy, you know? And sometimes I talk to some rich guys, I'm like, just buy it, you know? You, you'll you have fun with it, but you'll forget about it in like a week. Uh, there's nothing really that excites me about it. There's not one thing that I could go, no, I guess there is one thing, 3D movies. If you really love movies, you love 3D movies, yeah, it's the best thing you could buy for 3D movies. I and See, I would buy it just for 3D movies because I used to be a projectionist and I've always loved 3D. 3D has been always been a thing for me. Uh, watching Avatar in 3D really was like pretty amazing because it used a different kind of 3D where it was more layered and it was like... I thought Avatar, the original Avatar in the movie theaters was the best thing I ever saw. And now the Apple Vision Pro is probably better than going to see a movie in a movie theater, an IMAX movie theater, any movie theater. I would probably rather watch that movie in an Apple Vision Pro. That's how good the 3D movie part of it is. But no one's going to buy a $3,500 headset just to watch a 3D movie. So adding a, uh, a, a Apple Pencil to this mix, uh, that seems like a great idea um, because they don't have a controller and uh, putting an Apple Pencil with the Apple Vision Pro seems like a no-brainer. And maybe you can do like a Harry Potter game where you use your pencil as a wand or something. I don't know. Uh, right now you could use your hand which isn't bad, but being able to draw seems like pretty good. Um, anyways, people have found a stylus in the code. You know, there's these people that just like look through codes. Every time Apple releases a new update for something, there's somebody that just hunts through all the code. And this person found that there was uh, references to a stylus so that's what makes people think that this is a stylus. If this new Apple Pencil does eventually release as a product, could it perhaps allow any table to be turned into a huge drawing canvas? Mm, or maybe it even support positional tracking, allowing for precise 3D or Yeah, it's like drawing in 3D. What you guys see us do in VR chat all the time. Again, you know, Apple is not uh, always the first person to create something new but they're going to do it right. And that's why I would be kind of excited if Apple released a new pencil for the Vision Pro to draw in. I would cream in my pants. I would be 
using it a lot more if I could draw with an Apple pencil. And yeah, I think it's not a system seller, but it's something as a system owner, I think I would get excited about. I think Apple actually launched too late. The internal components point to a product that was supposed to come out two years ago. If they did, a lot of ex No, not really. They're actually, like, look, if you put on the Apple Vision Pro and you, right when you turn it on, it is way better than any headset that I own. I own, head, I own this dumbass, th this is the Quest Pro. This launched at $1,500. I have headsets all around me that are very expensive, some even like ridiculously expensive that I don't use, but Apple Vision Pro really has the, the, the display is pretty amazing and watching a movie, pretty amazing. And it beats all these guys, no, no doubt. The biggest problem is they, they just don't have any games. If they partnered with Steam, if they partner or just allowed Steam, if they allowed controllers or if they had controllers, if you could just like, connect your Steam controllers, or your Valve Index controllers, it would change their shit overnight. But as it is right now, it's it's like adorable. It's just there's not enough to do. They really fucked up with not having the like Apple like needs to be shook. Like, hey, guys, stop fucking up, man. You guys have ignored games for so long. You either team up with Nintendo right now. If they teamed up with Nintendo right now and they brought Nintendo games to the Apple Vision Pro, they would sell a million headsets at the same price overnight. You know that? Isn't that crazy? They would sell a million if Nintendo and Apple got together. Apple Vision Pro with controllers. All Nintendo. The new Mario is on the Apple Vision Pro. It would blow everyone out of the water. And Nintendo and Apple um, seem like the perfect combination in the world. Nintendo and Apple would never sit at the same table. I don't know, man. Who knows? Who knows? Um, they work together though. The Mario, on, there's a Mario game on uh, both the iPad and the iPhone. There's Mario Kart. I just typed in uh, Apple and Nintendo on Google and a lot of people all want them to, to, there's a lot of people that have the same feelings as me, I think. Um, but they have Super Mario Run, Mario Kart Tour, Animal Crossing, Pocket Camp, and Fire Emblem Heroes. Nintendo has those games on the Apple Store, App Store for Apple. So they, they work together. I need to be in Apple PR. I wish I was. That would be fun. Um, Apple is too close source. Wow, that sounds like exactly what Nintendo would want, don't you think? Don't you think? Don't you think? Here's an interesting thing. Combining Apple and Nintendo seems weird, right? Well, Sony hasn't been really happy with their VR sales recently there they uh there's been rumors in the past that they actually stopped manufacturing playstation vr2 or actually they put it on pause because they have too much inventory it's not selling fast enough that's kind of really sad because honestly the sony playstation vr2 is a proper product if you have a playstation already 
Uh, I wouldn't recommend it though, because I'd recommend a quest over that just because, you know, you're closed off to only um, Sony games, but it is a proper quality experience. But recent rumors have been going around saying that because of this and because of this, that they're thinking about allowing the headset to be attached to a PC, kind of like the Quest. So you'll be able to attach it to a PC and play games using that headset, which probably would sell some units. Well, there's this new, hold on. I don't know if you guys can see this. We have a cat problem right now. Hey, get off. Sorry, guys. Cats. Am I right? Anyways, uh... There's a new PSVR 2 update that includes new support for NVIDIA GPUs pointing to a wired PC VR connection. So a new update that supports GPUs are pretty much saying, yeah, we're having this come soon. Anyways, uh, the uh, third party project dedicated to bringing the unofficial PC VR support to PSVR 2 announced on X. The headset's latest firmware update seems to show that Sony is indeed enabling support for NVIDIA GPUs ahead of its own official solution for the PC VR. Previously, the headset only supported AMD graphics since that's what's built into the PS5 console. It remains to be seen, though, what sort of hardware adapters will be required, you know, and all that shit. So there we go. That looks great. That looks nice. Boom, boom, boom. Laser dance, hands on. Forget the floor is lava. You got lasers now. This is a new game where that takes your own living room, I think, and turns it into, like, you know, one of those old... Uh, spy movies like Mission Impossible where you're like going around the lasers not trying to get the alarm on. I think that's what this is. Let's, I, I might be wrong. I don't know, let's take a look. This is a great idea, by the way. Wow, what a great idea. Holy oh, shit. What a great idea. Laser dance coming later this year, it appears. Uh, here's some more footage of it, of somebody actually playing it. Um, that's pretty cool because it takes your own living room. It makes it pretty much a, uh, like a spy movie. Mission Impossible. Yep. Like it. Very cool. Multiplayer JRPG Soul Covenant Covenant coming to all major VR headsets next month. Let's just take a look at that. Right. That's the trailer for you guys. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Kyle. Thanks a lot. I could see, like, if you are doing a trailer like that for a game that everyone's been waiting for for years. Like, I can't wait for them to make a new blah, blah. You know, and then they play, put, played that. You'd be like, it's so amped up. Like, oh, I can't believe that. And you'd be dissecting everything you just saw. But I've never heard of this game in my life. How do you make something such a tease that no one gives a fudge about it? And I said fudge. I know I said fudge. Because I ain't going down for some dumbass soul coming, coming, coming. All right. These vodkas and Sunny D's might be getting to me a little bit more than the Red Bull somehow. I should stop drinking Red Bull and vodka, though. That just doesn't seem that great. 
But I should, should not be doing Sunny D. It's sugar free Red Bull is not any. I might not be able to stay up all night and play VR either because I'm all usually so jacked on, on Red Bull. Sunny D is going to get me down. <coughs> Mm, they need to put Boulder's Gate on VR already. That would be great. I bet it already is. I bet there's already Boulder's Gate in VR. We'll take a look at that in a second. Lawn mowing VR is right up my alley. I love the spray washer VR and all that shit. And lawn mowing VR sounds pretty badass. Let's look at their trailer. Here we go. Mow that fucking lawn, bitch. 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 Mow that fucking lawn. I mean, it's kind of satisfying. I mean, 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 I I mean, I I don't know. You know, just mowing your lawn. Just having fun mowing some lawn. This definitely hits the nerve of uh, spray washing in VR. You know, it's like mowing a lawn. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous where this is more satisfying than actually doing it. There's no HOA, though, which is great. Ugh. The place I live at has the worst HOA. I mean, I literally, it rained. And like within the next day of it raining, all these weeds just popped up. Like literally, I'm checking my, my security cameras. And I'm like, holy shit, these things fucking grew fast. It's like 24 hours. I got a HOA notice and a photo of my yard warning me that I'm going to get fined. But I don't deal with these weeds. Like, what if I was on vacation for a week? Ugh. They need to, like, take a photo of that and then come back in, like, a couple weeks. And if it's the same kind of shit, then you send a fucking notice. You don't send it a day after it rains. Like, literally, what if I was out of town? I'm going to get fined if I go out of town? I... There's an HOA meeting like in a week and they sent me like just a notice like I could come come to it, you know, like a, a meeting. I kind of want to go there and just like film it and just like kind of go crazy on them. But I also don't want them to know who I am. You know what I mean? So maybe I'll have Janice do it. I'll have Janice go ape shit on them. I don't want to do it. Have Janice go off on some dumbass fucking idiots. Like, literally dumbass idiots. No brain cells at all. I love Texas, but there's also a lot of dumbass idiots and horrible drivers out here. The worst drivers you will ever see in your life. VR Kiwi releases first person VR platformer Stilt. All right. All right. All right. Wow, no trailer. I don't give a fuck. Let's move on. Rager Demo brings rhythm melee combat to Quest. Hmm. Rhythm melee combat. Okay. Let's see uh, what kind of copyright strikes I get from this trailer. Hmm.
Janice telling the HOA to drink some water. That would be quite the moment. Oh, God, you're right, Odd. You are right. There might be something to this. Wow, this looks actually really cool. I like where it shows you where you're supposed to slice the people or kill them. That actually is kind of cool. You see that where it's like, it shows you where to slice them in the, uh, nice. I don't know what copyright strike I'm getting right now. That actually looks fun, guys. That's not bad. It's out for Steam VR uh, demo right now for Steam VR and Quest. Uh, for a rhythm game, that actually seems way more fun to me than like hitting little drums while I'm going down a roller coaster made out of lasers. Is that what you guys like to do? You like going down little roller coasters with lasers to the beat? <laughs> well, I'll be in Rager. I would actually be in this game. Okay, I got a little bit of Sunny D to use. How did that, man, that's how little Sunny D I used, dude. That's kind of fucked up. These have definitely been Sunny D martinis. Um, one thing I, you know, instead of playing that rhythm game that we just showed, this is kind of more my style i've always been you know before angry birds i was a worms fanatic you guys remember that game worms Ugh, all day that was my favorite shit back in the pc days uh worms was always my favorite and when angry birds came out i kind of really accepted angry birds a lot because of the old worms days uh but angry birds vr using your own furniture around your house this I could get into. And this is called Angry Birds VR Isle of Pigs. Uh, it includes controller and hand support. Let's just take a look at the fucking trailer. I fucking love this. I really do love this. This is something I could get around. Like, your your girlfriend's trying to talk to you. You put on your headset. I'm like, I can see you and hear you. And you're just playing Angry Birds on the coffee table in front of her. What the hell? What's that mean? It's hilarious. Um, anyways, let's watch the rest. Very cool. Uh, so yeah, it looks like you can play that now on the quest only. Oh my, that's a game. See, that's a perfect game that if it's Quest only, that kind of sucks because that would be perfect for the Apple Vision Pro. Oh, it has to be. If they don't do that on the Apple Vision Pro, Get out of here. Get out of here. Huh. I don't see anything about it. That's 
very depressing. What a depressing end of part one of Virtual Red Band. Angry Birds VR, I guess, is Quest only. Just another stab at Apple and how big of a company Apple is can, and, and can fail so hard and so strong. I mean, how the fuck, Sickles, do you not have Angry Birds or lawn mowing at least? Uh, you got to get Apple has been always somebody that has really ignored gamers. Any gamer knows you couldn't have an Apple if you're a gamer. How crazy is that? And Apple just smug about the whole thing. They just never wanted to get into gaming. I don't know why. It's something something that I guess Steve Jobs probably said like gamers are stupid. Make sure you can never play games. Oh, I died. Like, I, I makes me wonder if there's some, like, secret thing that Apple does that just hates games, hates gamers, because this is just ridiculous that you can't even fucking play Angry Birds on the Apple Vision Pro. Get out of here. Well, guys, if you're new here, welcome to Virtual Red Band. I'm going to tell you right now that part two, we actually go into virtual reality. See, see that right there? That's the that's where the virtual reality starts. We're going to jump in this little water right here. But that's on part two, and part two starts in about 15 minutes. So if you're on YouTube, you can just wait 15 minutes and refresh your page. I'll be live again soon. Or if you follow me on X or Instagram, I might post a link for part two. And part two will be in virtual reality. I'll be playing a woman. So I hope it doesn't confuse anybody, anger anybody. Uh, you know, the people that usually get angry when a guy becomes a woman... Uh, I tried to make her have big boobs for y'all. So uh, hopefully my big boobies will help you get through it. Uh, it's just virtual reality. Uh, anyways, part two of virtual red band starts in about 15 minutes. So grab a drink, take a piss, walk the dog, make a baby, scoop out some poop from the cat litter, put it in a paper bag and put it on your ex-girlfriend's porch. Because in 15 minutes, virtual red band part two, is about to start. See ya soon. Mm. <laughs>